Hi guys, welcome to yet another discussion about basics in physical NMR. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the population of uh, energy levels present in NMR and the gyromagnetic ratio gamma. Okay, so without for any further delay, let's get into the topic. First of all, let us see about the population of the energy levels after the Siemens splitting. Okay, so after the Siemens splitting, uh, my ground state uh, energy level will be split into uh, further energy levels based on the uh, formula 2i plus 1. Right, so uh, according to the Boltzmann distribution law, this is the Boltzmann distribution law, this is a common uh, distribution law used in every other spectroscopies also. So, given by the great uh, scientist Boltzmann. So according to the Boltzmann distribution law, this is our formula. And from the previous video, we also calculated the energy level separation. That is the new value. For nuclei, it is 100 megahertz. And for electrons, it is 9,500 megahertz. In our previous video, we have calculated it. If you haven't seen in our previous video, please uh, go back to the our previous video and uh, come here. I, if I want del E, I want only del E. Okay, so I want to multiply uh, H in my right hand side. So this is just cross multiplication. After uh, another mathematical steps, we will uh, reach uh, del E is 6.62 into 10 power minus 26 joule for nuclei. And uh, del E is 6.299 into 10 power minus 24 joule for electrons. I'm going to substitute my del E value. We already know what is KB. KB is Boltzmann constant. T is temperature. Okay, uh, for normal, uh, uh, for room temperature, I'm going to calculate this value. For room temperature, it is uh, approximately 300 Kelvin. So for nuclei, if I uh, apply all these values, uh, KB Boltzmann constant value is 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 Joule Kelvin inverse, which is a constant. I'm going to apply my temperature as 300 Kelvin. I'm going to assume that uh, for room temperature. So Delhi, we have calculated in the last slide. So if I simplify this, I will get exponential of minus 1 into 10 power minus 5, which I can also write as 1 minus 10 power minus 5. So for electrons, if I simplify, I will get 1 minus 10 power minus 3. So look closely. So this is one, not, nothing but 1 minus 0 0.00001 and this is nothing but 1 minus 0 0.001. So which is nothing but uh, more or less uh, equal to 1. Right. So this ratio is more or less equal to one. So uh, Boltzmann is uh, trying to imply here that from the Boltzmann distribution law in NMR spectroscopies, the energy levels, the lower energy level and higher energy level, the population of these energy level is more or less equal. OK, so it will be said that out of 10,000 particles, OK, out of 10,000 particles, only 6.4 particles are present in excess in the lower energy level compared to the higher energy level. So we uh, we, are, we are getting a ratio of uh, number of uh, particles in upper energy level divided by number of particles in lower energy level. If this ratio is uh, uh, less than one, then uh, my lower energy level is, ha is having some higher uh, uh, is having more particles. My lower energy level is having more particles compared to the upper energy level. What is gyromagnetic ratio then? A magnetic field can be generated in three ways. One, an electron is uh, in its orbital motion, so it can generate a magnetic field around the nucleus. It is uh, based on the general physics concept. If an electric current is made to flow around a loop, it will generate a magnetic field. What are the other two ways? Um, the other two ways we have already seen in our previous uh, video, a uh, nucleus uh, according to its spin will generate its uh, nuclear magnetic moment and electron according to its uh, spin, it will generate an electron magnetic moment. So these are the three ways in which magnetic field can be produced inside a molecule without any external applied field. It is seen by the quantum mechanical aspects that um, this magnetic moment thus generated will be directly proportional to the spin angular momentum. 
So mu operator is directly proportional to our spin angular momentum operator, S operator. So uh, if I am going to take away this proportionality, I am going to introduce a proportionality constant. This proportionality constant is nothing but gamma, which is our gyromagnetic ratio, also known as magnetogyric ratio. Okay. So this uh, gyromagnetic ratio has a unit of radians, second inverse, Tesla inverse. It is a uh, it is it has different values for different nucleus okay different nucleus will have different gyromagnetic ratio values so uh, if my uh, gyromagnetic ratio value is positive then my spin angular momentum is going to be uh, aligned along the field of my magnetic moment okay so if my gyromagnetic ratio is negative you, you can also see from here this formula if my ga gamma is positive mu is equal to positive spin angular momentum if my gamma is negative mu is equal to minus uh, spin angular momentum that's why here i am representing here in its image gamma is uh, z positive my spin angular momentum will align along the magnetic moment if my gamma is negative my spin angular momentum will align opposed to the magnetic moment that's all for today's video so uh, if you like this video, please uh, like, uh, sh share and uh, put your suggestions in our comment box. And uh, if you want to view this uh, video in my mother language, Tamil, then you can also check it out, uh, this video in my Tamil. I, I have given my Tamil channels link in this description. And I have also provided the references I used for the videos in the description. Make a good use of it. So thank you guys.